Local breaking news happening right now. A two alarm fire at a home in South Fargo. We want to head out live to the Valley today's JC Dodd, the only reporter on scene, and she joins us with the very latest. Good morning, JC. Good morning, Jordan. We've been over here for we've been out here for over an hour. Still very active. Still lots of smoke coming from this house in South Fargo. We're in the 1400 block of Second Avenue um, South in Fargo. I'm going to step out of the way and you can see just what we're looking at. So many fire engines still battling. I just spoke with a police officer who says um, there's still some active flames in the back of this house. This wind that Lisa's been talking about is not helping the fire. Look at all of that smoke. It has looked like this. It has been this dense all morning. We've been here since um, around 530. The call came in at 508 this morning. Now, um, I do want to say that um, over dispatch, we heard a neighbor say that an elderly couple lives in this house. Um, this has not been confirmed by police or fire. Now, um, just after five, we um, saw someone come out of the house. It looked like the fire crews were performing CPR um, and they were taken off in a stretcher. stretcher. Now, Jordan, I'm expected to speak to the fire marshal coming up here shortly and I'll bring you the latest from the information I get from him, Jordan. JC Don reporting on breaking news happening right now in South Fargo. Thank you. We'll check in again with you throughout the morning. Also breaking news this morning near Rothsay, Minnesota. The fire department there says it responded to a shop fire earlier today. We have some pictures that Valley News Live obtained of the scene. We called the Ottertail County Sheriff's Office this morning. They said to expect more information on this fire a little later today. The fire department says temperatures felt around negative 30 while they were fighting the fire this morning. And it is a cold morning no matter where you are out there. Add in the winds, it just makes it brutal. Lisa Green has a check of your forecast. Yes, yeah, so first alert weather day today because of that wind. It's a warming wind. But again, like Jordan was mentioning, you're not going to feel it. In fact, it's going to feel even colder out there, especially this morning as our temperatures try to rise. So we have a couple of alerts that have been issued this morning in the blue area here. Northern Valley, Grand Forks, Langdon, Cavalier, back to Thief River Falls and Roseau. Uh, we are under a winter weather advisory in this area. It will last until noon this afternoon. We've got the warm front moving through. And then once that clears, things kind of ease up a little bit temporarily before the next moves in, but we're talking about this area being the most likely for the lowest visibility reductions and our wind gusts a little bit higher in that area too, up to about 45 miles per hour. And then the other issue is that cold we've been talking about. We're still under a, a, a wind chill advisory here in the teal colors in Grand Forks, Fargo and points east where the colder air still is in place and that is in effect until 9 a.m. So a few more hours left on this. Gradually we do see temperatures warm up and the wind chills won't be as dangerous, but all day long it's going to feel colder than you're seeing on the uh, uh, number for your temperature here today. So Fargo seven below right now. It feels more like we're in the 30s below seven below in Grand Forks. The River Falls above zero now at three above. There's some snow in the vicinity. Eight below in Bemidji and Fergus Falls. Your temperatures there and Devil's Lake, one of the places that has been warming up. We're at 14 degrees above zero now and more of us will see that number. Here's a look at our winds. We've been gusting into the 20s now in Fargo, close to 30 miles per hour out of the south. Oaks gusting to 39 miles per hour and every location in the valley checking in with some wind. Some places are a little lighter over to the east still, but even in Bidette, we've got a gust here to 23 miles per hour, a gust to 35 in Thief River and over in Devil's Lake gusting to 31. So those winds are strong enough to cause that drifting across roadways leading to additional slick spots and especially in open country, the potential for low visibility as we go through the day today. And we have had reports where visibility is at less than a mile, both north and south here this morning. So here's a look at the latest forecast for you. Again, temperatures on the rise. We get into the upper 20s to some low 30s this afternoon. Wind, though, will be a factor all day. We'll see wind starting out of the south, heading into the afternoon hours, turning westerly, and then eventually that northerly wind takes over as the cold front moves through, and that'll bring about a chance for some areas of isolated light snow showers. Not heavy, but enough that it's going to add to issues with visibility. It's going to compound things for us for later tonight. So two rounds, one in the morning, and then a one again this evening. So tough travel out there today, a high of 30, but don't let that fool you. It's going to be a tough day. Tomorrow morning, we may see some of that wind linger a bit out of the northwest, so we may see a few areas of some patchy blowing snow to start off Thursday. 
And then a little colder behind the system, but not as intense as we've seen recently when these clippers move through. Friday afternoon back into the teens, and the weekend looking pretty good. Teens and 20s for highs and, and a lot quieter here. Uh, so that's something to look forward to as we're dealing with the tough weather today. Make sure you're bundling up this morning. It's rough out there. And then if you're trying to navigate through those areas of blowing snow, you don't want to run into some trouble without being properly prepared and uh, covering up here today. Yeah, and more schools are even now going two hours late. We just got one in. Lisa, this is a weather system to watch today. Thank you. Now 655 Fargo's police chief is responding to criticism from former officers and staff who say the work environment within the department is quote toxic. A VNL investigation found 35 officers and civilian staff members quit over the last 18 months because of what many of them said is a bad work environment under Chief David Zabolski. But he disagrees. Zabolski says the stressors of the job and the recent changes like body cameras and online reporting might be a lot for some people to handle. He points to the addition of five new officers just this week as evidence that the sky is not falling. The city did develop a performance action plan over the next few weeks to help improve things at the department with a reevaluation of the chief in six months. Sobolski says he hopes part of the action plan is offering more mental health resources to officers. They're billing it as a pretty big deal. North Dakota Governor Doug Burgum is going to be in Williston today to announce a major economic development project. He says it will involve cutting edge technology. Burgum's news conference will be at 11 this morning. It will be live streamed on his Facebook page. Prosecutors at the federal trial of three former Minneapolis police officers charged with violating George Floyd's civil rights are trying to show that even bystanders knew the black man needed help as former officer Derek Chauvin knelt on Floyd's neck. One witness wept on the stand yesterday while recounting how he pleaded with officers to let Floyd breathe. Prosecutors say former officers J. Alexander King, Thomas Lane and Toe Tao had basic medical training, but they still did nothing. Chauvin pinned Floyd's neck to the ground for nine and a half minutes as he was face down in handcuffs and gasping for air. Chauvin was convicted last year of murder and pleaded guilty to a federal count of violating Floyd's civil rights. Enough product, just not enough drivers, and that's put dozens of North Dakota schools at risk of losing milk deliveries. Critical labor issues are prompting an emergency order from Governor Doug Burgum designed to ease a shortage of truck drivers to deliver milk to schools, businesses, and other customers. The order waives the hours of service requirements for drivers for 30 days, which allows a decision by the state's Milk Marketing Board to waive enforcement of certain licensing requirements until April 1st. The measures come after a major milk distributor in North Dakota went out of business, in part because of a lack of certified drivers. That put more than 50 school districts at risk of losing their milk deliveries. The state ag commissioner is also spearheading an effort to recruit truckers who have allowed their commercial driver's licenses to expire. North Dakota has lost 3,000 certified drivers since 2017. Today is your first chance to meet the five finalists vying to be NDSU's next president. The school is hosting an open forum where each candidate will give their own presentation. It starts at 10.30 this morning in the Memorial Union. A benefit hockey game for a man hit hard by the West Nile virus took an interesting turn. It's all for Dryden Thompson. There was a raffle drawing held last night to help him, and his grandpa ended up winning that 50-50 drawing. Uh, it's, uh, I'm just so happy that, that that ticket was in my pocket as, since from the time I got here at the arena, which has been about just about two hours and a half ago. And uh, when they, the number was called, I looked at it, and I said, well, what is this? Is this a ticket? And people said, look, let me see, Roland, let me see. And I thought, oh, my heavenly days, here it is. So <laughs> that's what I said. Talk about a sign from above. And his grandpa says it's a no-brainer. He's donating all of the winnings from that raffle to his son's benefit. The Today Show and CBS This Morning or CBS Mornings are just about to start, but the Valley Today rolls on. We have more live up to the minute news and weather coverage, including that breaking news happening right now in South Fargo with that house fire. Plus, it's a first alert weather day. Lisa Green lets us know how it will impact.